slide 36. Lesson 2. Numbers. Cardinals and Ordinals. Numbers, like everything else in Hebrew, occur as masculine and feminine. Let's look at the cardinal numbers first. That's numbers 1, 2, 3, etc. We have masculine and feminine versions of these numbers. The masculine first. The number 1 is called Echad. Echad. Aleph, Chet, Dalit. Echad. The number 2 in Hebrew is called Shinaim. Shinaim. Shin, Nun, Yod, Mem. Shinaim. The number 3 is called Shalosha. Shalosha. Shin, Lamed, Shin, Hay. Shalosha. The number 4 is called Arba. Arba. Aleph, Resh, Bet, or Bet, Ayin, Hay, Arba, four. Five is called Chamisha, Chamisha, Chet, Mim, Shin, Hay, Chet, Mim, Shin, Hay, Chamisha. Six is called shisha, shisha, shin, shin, hay. Seven is called shivi, shiva, shiva, shin, bait, or bet, ayin, hay, shiva. Number eight. In Hebrew, is called Shmona. Shmona. Shin, Mem, Nun, Hay. Shin, Mem, Nun, Hay. Shmona. Number nine is called Tesha. Tesha. Tav, Shin, Ayin, Hay. Tesha. And finally, the number 10 is called Asara, Asara, Ayin, Sin, Resh, Hay, Asara, Ayin, Sin, Resh, Hay. The feminine numbers are more or less the same, but they lack the Hay at the end of the word in most cases. And instead of echad for one, we have echat with a tav at the end instead of a dalit. Achat. And instead of shanaim for two, we have shataim. Shataim. And we have shalosh for three instead of shalosha. And for four, we have arba instead of arba'a. And the four five, we have Chamish instead of Chamisha. And for six, Sheish instead of Shisha. And Shiva for seven instead of Shiva. And Shmona instead of Shimona for eight. And for nine, Tesha instead of Tesha and for ten Esir instead of Asara. So these numbers are used uh, either the masculine or the feminine are used to describe a noun. If the noun, the thing that it's numbering, is a masculine thing then we use the masculine numbers, and if it's feminine, we use the feminine numbers. Of course, in English, we only have 
the numbers 1 to 10, we don't have a masculine or feminine. But other languages do have masculine and feminine. And of course, Hebrew is one such language. Now, as well as the cardinal numbers, we have the ordinals. That's uh, first, second, third, etc. So these describe uh, the order of things. Is it the first or is it the second, third, fourth, etc.? First is Rishon. Rishon. The first day of the week is called Yom Rishon. We'll have a look at the days of the week shortly. And the uh, the word for second in Hebrew is Shini. By the way, the, for the word for first, Rishon, it reminds us of Berashit, in the beginning, Rishon, first, or the head, or the beginning of things. Second, as I said, is Shini. Third is Shalishi. Fourth is Revi'i. Fifth is Chamishi. Sixth is Shishi. Seventh is Shavi'i. Eighth is Shemini. Ninth is Teshi'i. And tenth is Asiri. Now the feminine numbers, ordinal numbers, are very similar. We have for first Rishonah, for second Shanit, for third Shalashit, for fourth Rivait, for fifth Chamishit, for sixth Shishit, for seventh Shavit, for eighth Shemanit, for ninth Tashit. And for tenth, a C read. And we'll have a look at these numbers as they're used for the days of the week and the, the names of the months. So that's it for numbers, cardinals and ordinals. Slide 37. Lesson 2. Numbers. Days of the week. In the biblical week, there are seven days, just like in uh, our calendar. The first day of the week uh, is our Sunday, and the seventh day of the week is our Saturday. But a biblical day begins in the evening, in Genesis 1.5. We read, there was evening and morning the first day, evening and morning, the second day, and so on and so forth. The first day of the week in the Bible is called Yom Rishon. Yom Rishon. Remember from the ordinal numbers that Rishon means first. So this literally means Yom, which means day, Yod Vav Mem, Yom Rishon, day one, day first. Not day one, day first. Second day of the week is actually called Yom Shani, which actually just means day second. Yom Shani. And you guessed it, the third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth days of the week are called the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth days. Yom Shalishi, day third, for what we would call our Tuesday, or part of our Tuesday, Yom Ravii, Yom Ravii, for fourth day, Yom Chamishi, Yom Chamishi, for fifth day, and Yom Shishi, Yom Shishi, for sixth day. And finally, the seventh day can be called Yom Shavii, seventh day, but of course it's called in the Bible everywhere as the Shabbat or Shabbat, Shabbat, which means to sit down or to, to rest. Now, um, 
The first day of the week, Yom Rishon is mentioned as such in Leviticus 23, be Yom HaRishon, on the first day. Now, interestingly, this is not what is called uh, the first day in Genesis 1.5. But there, although it's often translated in the King James as the first day, it literally says Yom Echad, which means day one, Yom Echad. And the normal word for the first day of the week everywhere else in the Bible is Rishon, Yom Rishon, the first day. So saying Yom Achad is actually suggesting something, that it isn't actually the first day of creation, but a recreation, Yom Achad. So it's not first day, it's day one. But all the other days of the week in the Genesis account are uh, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, or Yom Shini, Yom Shalishi, Yom Revi'i, Yom Chamishi, and Yom Hashishi. It's in Genesis 1.8, verse 13, 19, 23, and 31. After that. And finally, the uh, Shabbat. Um, it's uh, be Yom Hashavii on the seventh day, uh, Genesis 2 2, um, Yahweh or God rested, Elohim rested, Shabbat, Shabbat. So here we have the, uh, the seven days of the week mentioned in the first chapter of the Bible and the day of rest mentioned in the uh, second chapter. So the days of the week are very important. And we find that Yahweh does a lot of things in groups of sevens. There are seven churches or kehilot, uh, this, which are the seven candles of the uh, menorah or seven branch candlestick. Uh, there are the seven feasts. And in Leviticus 23, the, the feasts are introduced, first of all, with a mention of the... Uh, Six days of creation and Yahweh resting on the Shabbat. So we find in Scripture that there are, are a, there is a link when things of a similar number are mentioned: seven feasts, seven churches, seven candlesticks, seven days of creation, and so forth. So um, one thing can tell us a lot about the other. There are seven voices. Uh, there are seven spirits. Uh, which are the seven angels of the seven churches uh, in the book of Revelation. So numbers tell us a lot. And um, these numbers of the week are very important because they're mentioned in the first chapter of the Word of God in Genesis chapter 1 or Bereshit. So that's all for numbers, days of the week.